computer chapter 3, verse 14. Verse 14. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Therefore, hmm. okay, to understand this therefore that is there, let's see if we can start at um, verse 10. Good. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. What is the day of the Lord? When we are speaking about the day of the Lord, that is what we like to call the day of the landlord. That is when the Lord will return to take over the earth. To gather in the harvest and to establish his kingdom and dominion of righteousness. It's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is also the day of judgment. It's the day of judgment. So Paul is saying here, I mean Peter is saying here, that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. None of us will be aware when it's going to come, but it's going to come. And what will happen is that the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Help me, Holy Spirit. You see, dear brethren, one of the things that scares me about my generation is that many people are not preparing for the day of the Lord. We're not preparing for the day of the Lord. The average Christian is not even living in that sense of expectation and realization that one day the landlord will be back. And see the way Peter is describing it. He said, even the heavens will be melted. Everything in the earth, all the works. You know this, this craze to drive a Mercedes. Everything in the earth will be what? Burned up. Burned up. So at that time, dear sister, if all you lived for is in the earth, it will be obvious that your life was a waste. Are you with me? These things that we are trying to kill ourselves for in the day of the Lord, they will not matter. Hmm. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you see, this is why fellowship is important. You know what fellowship helps you do? Understand this, that there are all kinds of appetites, all kinds of desires, all kinds of longings that plague mortal man currently. They are alien to the design that God made at the beginning. The original design of God, the original man did not have those appetites. He didn't have those longings. What fellowship does for you is to put what is important in front of your eyes to cure you of your corruption. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. So, the more you, you spend time with God, the more you take time to know His ways, the more He will begin to kill the loss for the things that are unimportant in your heart. They will be dying. If you find a man that has truly learned how to be with God, one of the signs that he is true is that everything in this realm will be like dung to him. They will not have power over his soul. Over his soul. You can't bribe him. What do you want to use to bribe him? Is it not money? Money, he doesn't, he doesn't. Money is not his God. He has learned both how to abase and to abound. When there's plenty, he's okay. When there's nothing, he's even more okay. Fellowship is a system God uses to purge. He uses it to cleanse. So the more you are looking at him, the more hunger for him becomes greater than hunger for food. I have elevated your law above my necessary food. The reason a man can elevate God's word 
above food that is necessary is that he's seen something. He wants God. You know, last week we were about to close. I was asking you a question. Does God really satisfy you? Is God enough? Is he enough? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. When you begin to grow up in the ways of God, one of the things you will find is that you will want God more than life. You will want Him. 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 And if it's only Him and an empty bank account, He will be enough. He will be enough. The reason we are raising Christians that can steal, lie, fornicate, is because when we enter into the realm of fellowship, it's not God we are seeing. We are seeing all the things that He can give us, not Him. And you know the danger of that is the Lord's day will come like a thief in the night. It will come up. And all these things you are doing everything to get. You are, oh my God. You are trying. You want to die. Just to get rich or die trying. All these things, they will be burned up. The Bible says everything will be naked before his eyes. Everything. So if you have defined yourself by your job, I work in one of the, 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 the best generation banks. Oh God. Say my, my salary is in six figures. We are the happening people in the land. There's nothing wrong with blessing. I'm just telling you scripture. They will be burned up. So when you begin to grow in grace, oh my God, help me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you are growing in grace. And we are going to get there. You are not only growing in grace, you are growing in the knowledge of God. What fellowship begins to do for you, brother, is that it, it focuses your sight. You begin to realize that God is the priority of the Christian life. Him. 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 You will want all of him. If you've ever drank his waters, you know, there are scriptures we quote, and sometimes I sit with these scriptures and I now say, Lord, is this, is this all that there is to this scripture? He that is thirsty, let him come and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you know what that means? What kind of test is he talking about? What kind of drinking is he talking about? Say, come and drink. And then out of your belly, there shall be a gushing fort. You know the thing about water? Water must consistently have a source. If the source dries up, the water will dry. So when he says, he that is thirsty, it means you have to continually be thirsty. It means that you have to continually be drinking. So that continually there will be a gushing forth. It must keep flowing. Some of you used to feel the gushing, but it's gone now. Because you drank once and you stopped. You've walked away. The bright lights of this world have captured your attention. The thing that the world has to offer has captured your attention. I'm trying to show you. The reason you could be distracted is that you have forgotten that there is a day called the day of what? The day of the Lord. And when that day comes, every man will be naked. All of us will be stripped naked to bare bone. Who you are 
in the secret places of your life become visible to his eyes and not only to his eyes to all men because even the heavens will melt the heavens they will they will they, the way the heavens are going to pass the bible says it will be with great noise help me holy ghost 11 Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be? In holy conduct and godliness, verse 12, looking for what? And hastening the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. The matter here is, what manner of man ought you to be? If you know that the day of the Lord is coming, what kind, how are you supposed to be living on a daily basis? How? You know the reason this preacher will not cheat on his wife? I know the day of the Lord is coming. How much do you want to use to bribe me? You think I don't need money? The things I need to do with money now, if you give me 20 million, you can't solve it. I need money. But I know that the day of the Lord is coming. There's a way to conduct yourself. Go back to verse 11. Go back to verse 11. Verse 11. Help me now. He says, what manner of persons ought you to be? In what? I know, I know, I know you, are, you are here. In what? And what? Godliness. Holy, what is holy? I've taught you before. In a conduct that proves that you have been separated and sanctified unto God. To be holy is to be separated. He says that what manner of persons ought you to be in separation and sanctification. So when we see your conduct, we can tell that, ah, this one is separated and sanctified totally. Totally. 